seven books, the Clifton Chronicles. And when you write, do you think of a story? When, you, when you've been writing the Clifton Chronicles, do you think of your next story already? Or you're very focused and very, you know, imbued into the story that you're writing? First part of your question, I needed to be driven seven years. Second part of your question, I'm a storyteller, I have not a blooming clue where the book is going. And Lady Virginia, in particular, in the Clifton Chronicles, has driven me in directions I never even dreamed of. You wrote my story. I did. What is the distinguishing thing? I mean, the, you know, every human being has a unique and a different story. What is it that draws you to take one particular story, this epic story that you write about? I think it's that just happens, and you know straight away. And you know when, you know, the one thing you do know is when something won't work. Goodbye, he said, goodbye, she said, goodbye. He looked out of the window, and the sun went down on his young life. I would have given the earth to have written that. This story is about a boy. It's not about a girl. That's storytelling. I overtook an extremely attractive woman who was walking on the pavement. She overtook me eight times. <laughs> I overtook her eight times. Now you see, there's an observation I would make if I was writing about Bangalore. In fact, I'm convinced two or three more times and we'd have been engaged. <laughs> what made you face Nisha and Jamie's story to put in your book? I was invited to a dinner party, I think, in Mumbai. And I was sitting next to this beautiful lady. And her husband, who any one of you who knows, is an extremely good-looking man. And when you have been to Harvard Business School and you're that good looking, you don't have to worry about the likes of me. I'll make him so jealous, by the end of the meal, he'll be raging. So I'm blurting away, trying to make it clear this is the one woman in my life. And then at the end of the meal, I didn't realize he was in a wheelchair. Because he'd been sitting at a circular table on the far side. So when they left, I said to my pack, how sad, how did that happen? And he told me, and I was fascinated, because I was highly intelligent man, fascinated by what he had to say. I then rang them both and said, I need one hour each with you, separately. I don't need you in the same room at the same time, because I want to hear your version, and I want to hear your version. So I sat down and listened to the story told by the wife, listened to the story told by the husband, had heard the first bit, but that story would never have arisen if the man, the good-looking Harvard Business School man on the other side and walked out with his wife and said, to you, Jeffrey. <laughs> what do you read? At this dinner, and this very, very bright lady who introduced me to Arcane Aran, who are you reading, Jeffrey? She said. So I told her who I was reading. Who should I read? And she said, a sentence I will never forget, don't bother with the sacred cows of India, read R.K. Narayan. I've read everything R.K. Narayan ever written. Where do you enjoy sitting and reading? What's your favorite retreat? Um, right. When I write, there's no noise, no interruption for the whole eight hours. And the staff who work for me know it's a pain of death if they knock on the door or come anywhere near me. And in the last 30 years, I've only had three interruptions. My love story. love story. I think Pride and Prejudice is pretty hard to beat as a, as a sheer masterpiece. So why would you get married at 21 and be divorced at 23? He said, oh, Jeffrey, it didn't worry me that she was having an affair. It didn't worry me that she was sleeping with another man. But when I saw them walking down the street hand in hand, I knew I'd lost everything. And I stole that as an idea. And thought, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. That actually, what she's saying is holding hands is so much more personal, 
so much more wonderful than just having sex. And he spotted that immediately and divorced her. And it's remained in my mind for 48, 50 years. But India is something special on top of that. I've seen the crowd tonight. 700 young people <coughs> screaming and shouting for an old man who still writes tales. That's pretty thrilling. That's pretty exciting. And one of them said to me, why do you still bother? You've done everything. You don't need to prove anything. Oh, yes, I do, I said. Even at my age, I want to prove to all of you I can still do it. Thank you. And it changed my life, Jeffrey, because I realized that all of us have such little time left. And we have so much we want to achieve, so much we want to do. Big hug and cheers to Jeffrey. Thank you for coming and giving us this intimate fireside chat. Big, big hand. your channel.